<laughs> so first of all, how was the experience? Last night? I'm guessing it was the first time you'd seen the film, and what was your impression of, of the screening? Well, I, it was the first time I've been to a big film festival like this. That was mm. the, that, that was a large part of the overwhelming nature of it, in a huge cinema. No, it was. It's always a bit. I don't know. It's hard to say, isn't it? The first time you see yourself, particularly when when we've been um rather <laughs> enlarged. Yeah. Compared. The, the you look like an exaggerated version of yourself. I don't look that much like myself. <laughs> so it's probably different. Thank but. you very much, Jermaine. <laughs> <laughs> No, it was, it was it was it was very moving. So I always think it, I always think it must be because especially with a film like this, you don't you can't necessarily get a full picture until you see it all in its full glory. Was it kind of how you expected it to look in the end as a whole? We'd seen the characters, designs for the characters, and um, there were there were even models around of different sizes. Uh, that, I had. It was a complete surprise oh, to me really? all of you. Yeah. I, oh, yeah. I recognised you, but I couldn't recognise some of the other fellas. Yeah. I, I had a picture in my trailer of my my giant, so I'd look at that every morning, and I could see my mirror and say, oh, "Okay, I'm not going to look like that. I'm going to look like that." So, but otherwise, we we didn't really have much idea what what it would look like. No, I mean my memory of our scene together is is me crawling around on the floor in a t in a tiny little wire set that was only this tall. So I had, I had to be down like, like this to give Jermaine the right, right eye angle. And he was, he was bent over like this and little odd balsa wood props for the beams and things he was displacing inside my cave. So no, I had, uh, that was all a big, th th that worked. Was an, uh, I was partly at times going, wow, that's incredible that that worked. Yeah, we had different sets so we would, we would play our scenes that we had together on, um, and then you would have a set for Ruby as well, playing Sophie. For the different scales. <coughs> so I would go into his house, and uh, it's it's like five feet tall, so I would have to crouch, and yes, Mark would be on the ground, and then he had one that was his size, which was comfortable for you. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, then another one that's huge for uh, Sophie. And now, for, for me, it was, it was really nostalgic to watch because while I've grown up watching Spielberg's films, especially his children's films, and then also the books as well, I read the books. Did you find, did you have that experience as well of, you know, the, the pairing of the two was quite a, um, well, for me, it was quite a nostalgic experience. I just wondered how you felt. Yeah, that's right. It was definitely a Spielberg film, and uh, it, you would recognise a Spielberg film anyway, wouldn't you? Partly from, like all the John Williams music too, it reminded me of Fantasia at times, the... Like a almost like a ballet, the dream sequence. How s what a strong part the music plays in this, this film. But someone said to me once, you make a film three times when you write it, when you film it, and when you edit it. And and for me, the film it, it changed enormously in the editing process, particularly because it took a year and it involved so much technology. It, it was a, it was a whole different, a whole new film. Also, in a way, it kind of made me feel a bit sad because I feel like there's not these type of films aren't really made for kids anymore. They, you know, it's all it has to be all 3D action. Lots of, you know, it has to be. It feels like the people think that children's attention can't be held anymore by like a charming, you know, a, a, a lovely story like this. Do you think it's sad that the way the way kids are changing these days like that, and that they don't necessarily always read books, and you know, they're sitting on an iPad and they're, you know, do you think it's just the way? Is it, is it just? It's life or I mean. You have a young kid, what do you feel? Yeah, he does. Him and his friends do read books, which I'm absolutely amazed that they, they do, considering there's all these competing uh, mediums for their attention. But um, yeah, they still enjoy books and um, still love Roald Dahl books. So you don't think, so it's not a dying art form, this kind of like traditional children's storytelling, as, as we see it in this book and as we see it on this film? Do you think it's still, there's still a place for it today? I think kids have always born with imagination. I mean, if you take it away from them, you know, and do it all for them in films, it, it, yeah, I think that that's maybe, um, you're wasting an opportunity because they'll invest their imagination so willingly if you just give them some mystery and some, some clues. Stephen was saying this morning that certain film companies turn the film down because they didn't like the language. They thought the kids wouldn't follow the language. But, but the kids love the sound of words. We, I think we learn how to speak by, by listening to words. That's certainly what the poet Dylan Thomas said, was he fell in love with words by the sound, not the meaning. And so I, I, I think the, uh, 
the gobblefunk language would be one of the most popular things for kids. I remember meeting Glas uh, Glaswegian kids who had a whole secret language amongst them. Sounding <laughs> words so that parents didn't understand what they were saying. Did you find that? Like, did you find the language tricky? Oh no, I love the language. I was always asking to have more of it put back in. Yeah, absolutely. Um, do you could you consider yourself dreamers? Do you think um, would you would you consider yourself a dreamer? Yeah, <laughs> I suppose so. Or do you mean literally, like having dreams, uh, like in the in the film? Were they? Uh... I didn't mean that, but that too, either. I, I don't often remember my dreams these days, but uh, yes, I have to have daydreams. I have a strong impression uh, uh, many times during waking times that life is a dream, that things seem to be dreamlike and that, that, that uh, moments of synchronicity and things in the landscape just uh, feel very much like dreams at times. Mm. What do you think it is? What what is it about this story that you think is um, has got such a sort of huge appeal to to everyone, to adults, to children? What is it that makes it so special? Well, I think uh, part of it's a fantasy of becoming friends with a giant, which is um, it's that simple <laughs> for a kid. You, who wouldn't want a giant as a friend? Yeah, whether you're a kid or not. Yeah, that's that's very good. And I think also the uh, the the very wonderful relationship between. Um, kids and grandparents, or, or, or very young beings and very very old beings. That it reminded me of that too. Um, the, all the funny th things of an old person, the funny little habits and things of an old person, and that, that relationship. And Ruby, so, I mean, she's so great. She's fantastic in the in the film. Did it? How, does it change the dynamics when you're working with the children, especially someone who hasn't got acting experience? So does that bring something to you guys as well? Yeah, because you hear Stephen having to say very basic things about what acting is, like concentration, um, which she never had a problem with, in my impression. But or or an emotional scene, you 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 see her, and so so actually there are a lot of things you a director wouldn't say to you, which is kind of a helpful reminder you hear as he speaks with the child. At least I had that. Mm. No, he told me concentrate. <laughs> Did he? No. <laughs> <laughs> And then what about sort of, um, did you have to go to giant school? How did you, how did you oh my get God, inside did, giant? Oh my God, they did, yeah. Uh, oh my God, they had giant school the every bad giants, day. Yes, we had the bad school. giants. They worked much harder than I did. We had, um, we had movement coaching to learn how to, you know, wallop. Because it, it, in the volume, which is uh, we, where we film it, um, yeah, there's all these cameras are of a kind that are recording your movement so every movement you do is is um, translated into your character so you have to you have to be quite specific about how you move I don't think audiences will realize that I think <laughs> creations but they oh, you know when they all invade the um, every bit when all the giants are together that that's just the the film copying what all those ten actors did yeah. I recognized all of that all of the movements, the, the faces and th things I didn't often recognize, but even the faces are based also on um, all of the work you guys did. Yeah, we, we, all have, we all have we all have little dots on our faces recording every every muscle basically, and uh, so you can't relax, you can't just be yourself for a second like you can on film if the camera's not on you. You have to you have to uh, be that character the whole time. So even in between takes, you're kind of like lolloping around the set in your giant form? Maybe not between takes, but as soon as it's, it's going, you have to do the whole scene. You can't, you never know which, what they're gonna use. There's no actual cameras. So they can, they can get a shot from any point in time. So you have to be, you have to be concentrating, as you said. <laughs> a lot, Stephen had a lot of really brilliant uh, 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 I don't, uh, comics or people who write their own material as Jermaine does, you know, wonderfully. So some of the lines and the language too was was made up by you guys, wasn't it? Um, was a, it? a little bit, but it's, it's it's quite hard because it has to be in this gobble folk or in this yeah. giant language. <laughs> so it's hard to, yeah. you have to know you have to know it pretty well to go off script, so I probably not as much as I usually And there's some, obviously a lot of it, all of, it, all of it was <laughs> Whatever that 
Yeah. The, 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 one of the things about giants is they have a huge appetite. <laughs> I was thinking last night watching it, it wasn't going to, it was going to be like eating an M&M &M when you wanted a roast beef dinner, wasn't it, to have little Sophie? Eating a, eating a child. It wasn't going to last <laughs> No, it's true, they're quite tiny compared to us. Well, you I'm seeing, I, I, I can see the thank you flashing up on my screen, which I think means bugger off. Bugger off. <laughs> yeah, it's the polite way of saying, can you now leave your...